You're listening to the KSO Show. As always, I'm Derek Young, Managing Editor and Recruiting Analyst of K-State Online. Solo show today as we take a look at the implications in the big picture of Kansas State's Week 5 opponents right before the bye week as they will be hosting the Oklahoma Sooners. Quick look back into what happened last week. Obviously, there was a lot of what went wrong once again in Stillwater. Kansas State won there in 2017. Got pounced pretty good in Chris Kleiman's first season in 2019 at the road venue at Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys made them pay once again in 2021 as the Wildcats fell to Oklahoma State 31 to 20. Again, a lot went wrong. Not a lot went right. I thought a fast start was pretty important for the Wildcats just because with the backup quarterbacks and, and how their offense is structured with Will Howard or Jaron Lewis at the helm that playing from behind that they just weren't an offense that was really equipped to do that. But unfortunately, because of the defensive woes early in the ball game in a turnover that was pretty detrimental, having to settle for a field goal when Oklahoma state didn't um, before they took a breath, they were down 31 to 10 in Stillwater, and still And that was probably all she wrote at that point, because they just didn't have an offensive output to really withstand that kind of on, early onslaught from the Cowboys and Mike Gundy's club really took the fight to them in the first half. And, and that was the story of the game, because uh, like I said, they just weren't equipped to play from behind. Um, not enough of a passing offense to really win a ball game when they were, had those terms dictated to them. They weren't going to be able to, to throw a lot to win. And quite frankly, neither was Oklahoma state. If they were, if, if the, you know, the, the roles were reversed. I think Oklahoma State would probably, you know, suffered a pretty similar similar fate. But Oklahoma State was the one that took the fight to the Wildcats right out of the gate. They looked better on offense. They looked more prepared on offense. Kansas State's defense, for for whatever reason, was pretty anemic to start the ball game. And, and that really did them in because the offense just couldn't keep up. And like I said, the passing game just wasn't ever going to be enough. 31 points, it's a lot. Um, if you told me Oklahoma State was going to score 31 before the night began um, on Saturday, I would have probably predicted a loss. Obviously, I predicted a win, but I didn't think Oklahoma State was going to be able to tally 31 on the board. Um, Kansas State did get a defensive shutout in the second half. Um, you know, whenever you shut out a team, you're probably doing something right. Uh, but I think they, they got a lot of help from Oklahoma State wanting to be conservative because, as Mike Gundy said after the ball game, you know, at that point, you know, they were looking at it as a numbers game and they knew Kansas State wasn't going to be able to score 31 without some help from the Cowboys. So they decided to kind of tuck tuck it in, buckle it down and play conservative because the only way Kansas State was going to be able to outdo Oklahoma State is if Oklahoma State helped Kansas State. So they kind of took that out of their players' hands, which was probably the, least the smart play. But looking back on it, Mike Gundy also said, that he probably wished he would have let his guys go just a little bit more than, than what he allowed, especially in that second half. Looking forward, again, big picture implications of the Oklahoma game. A lot go out the window because of the loss in Stillwater. Obviously, you know, realistically, mathematically, Kansas State still has a shot to appear in Arlington for the Big 12 championship game. Um, but they got the, the, the March of Ferrer has really been shrunk because not only do they have a L in the column after the first week of Big 12 conference play. They now have, uh, you know, in the next three weeks because there is a buy in between uh, the two toughest teams is what everyone thought, you know, before the year started in Oklahoma and Iowa State. That was perceived as a class of the Big 12 before the season started. That Oklahoma probably had a big gap under them, and Oklahoma, and then Iowa State was number two, and then there was another big gap it's turned out that there might not be that gap that everyone anticipated between Iowa state and the rest of the league. Uh, but obviously that's still a few weeks out because there's Oklahoma before and the bye week too. looking at the Sooners. What are the implications? Well, really what it comes down to is an opportunity to do what very few can and have. And obviously I don't think it's, and obviously it's never been done under Lincoln Riley. I'd be surprised if it was ever done under Bob Stoops and that's Oklahoma losing to the same team three years in a row. I, I just don't know that we have seen that um, probably in this century um, since, since the calendar turned to 2000, because obviously Bob Stoops was the head coach before that. So that that's an interesting little opportunity that's on the doorstep for the Wildcats. Can they take advantage of it? And a lot's going to have to change offensively to be able to score enough to keep up with Oklahoma because as, as much as the Sooners have struggled in offense, they're probably, it's going to click at some point. You hope it doesn't click in Manhattan, but obviously you could. 
And um, but Kansas State's defense, I expect to are also respond to a poor outing in Stillwater. I think they'll have a better performance. Some of that's just going to be because I expect them to have Reggie Stubblefield back. I expect Nate Matlack to play a little bit more for some reason he didn't against Oklahoma State. Daniel Green doesn't have to miss the first half because this targeting penalty occurred in the first half against Oklahoma State. So they'll have Daniel Green. They'll have Reggie Stubblefield. Hopefully we see more of Nate Matlack. TJ Smith's status is obviously still up in the air. I don't know how serious his injury is, and I'm still been looking into that, but obviously um, to no avail, still not sure what his status will be um, or if he's significantly dinged up, just, just haven't heard that information. Um, and we'll probably hear more from on that front from Chris Kleiman on Tuesday. But I do expect a better outing from the offense or from the defense. The offense, well, to be quite honest, it probably can't be much worse than what we saw in Stillwater. And some of that could be helped if they do have the services of Skylar Thompson back under center for, for the, the contest against the Sooners. Obviously, Kansas State's upset Oklahoma two years in a row, as you hear. Um, and you might have heard my oven going off. But two, two years in a row, Kansas State's upset Oklahoma. Skylar Thompson was the quarterback for both of those games. Not sure you can get it done without him, um, but with him, you know, there's a shot. It's interesting. Uh, I expected the number to be – last last week I thought the number would be a little bit smaller. Oklahoma State, I think, opened up as a almost a 10-point favor on, on Kansas State. Everyone thought that line was a little stinky. And, you know, Vegas knows. So, you can't Oklahoma State won by 11. This week the line looks a little bit smaller than I would have anticipated. Obviously, some of that is from uh, – just Oklahoma not playing well yet this year. It hasn't clicked for them offensively. Spencer Rattler did get the late score to be West Virginia, but um, as the fans in Norman were chanting for Caleb Williams to enter the game. So that's an interesting angle as well. And all this, obviously it's also Spencer, Spencer Rattler's first, first true road game in the big 12, um, at least in front of a full house. Obviously he played games last year and big 12 contest on the road as a starting quarterback, but that was in a COVID season where no one had full attendance. It'll be a packed house in Manhattan, you would, you would think. And that's going to be interesting to see how Spencer Rattler responds. He's known to be a little shaky when things aren't going well. So it'll be interesting if things they can get things to snowball on him a little bit if the defense is able to get some momentum, if the offense can get in rhythm, if, if that can affect things against Spencer Rattler. Obviously, we'll talk about more of those ins and outs later in the week, but that's you know at least a little taste of what probably needs to go right for Kansas State. Um, the first true road game for Spencer Rattler, also the first Big 12 road game for Oklahoma since news leaked and was confirmed that the Sooners are leaving the Big 12 for the SEC. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of environment, hosting environment, Kansas State provides uh, to Oklahoma um, with the first look at those guys since they they decided to lead the, lead the league and obviously put things in on shaky ground there for a little bit. Things tightened up a little bit also when, when they added four members, that being UCF, BYU, Cincinnati, and Houston. But it's Oklahoma week. Can Kansas State win against the Sooners three years in a row? A very rare feat indeed. That's probably what the big picture and implications look like. But if you do pull it off and upset the Sooners for a third straight season, um, you, you get yourself back into that conversation maybe for a big 12 league championship. Oklahoma State and Baylor have it going right. As of now, Texas looks to have rebounded well since losing to Arkansas. There's, there's a lot of things to look at in that big 12 race. But Kansas State probably needs to, yeah, another another angle, a big picture to look at. Kansas State probably needs one of these two games. Unfortunately, obviously, it's against two really good clubs, uh, Oklahoma and Iowa State. Uh, by no means easy, an easy track there. Probably, um, at least, you know, Vegas would agree, and I think others would still believe that Oklahoma and Iowa State are probably better teams than Oklahoma State. I, I think people would still hold that opinion even of the cyclones right now even though they're struggling out of the gate a bit as well so not a not a not an easy track to go but i do think you have to win one of these two because the no and three sir in league play league play certainly makes the headspace a little bit tough even if the schedule loosens up a little bit after those three contests because you know a three-game losing streak is still hard to swallow so i win against either oklahoma or iowa state i wouldn't say is you know DEFCON one or anything of that sort three I'm not sure what which one's worse to be honest but I do think that just to have the right head space to have you know more meaningful football ahead of you they they have to win one of those games now if you ask me Iowa State at home 
you know, um, right after the bye week is probably the far winnable game, but you take a little bit of the pressure off if you can knock off the Sooners this Saturday in Manhattan, 2.30 kick, not 11 a.m. this time, by the way. And that'll be, I believe, on Fox. So obviously, as I said, I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO Show. Keep it locked to the KSO Show all week as we continue to preview and update everyone on the, the injury staff with Skylar Thompson and more preview the Oklahoma contest. Can K-State do it three years in a row? We'll find out on Saturday. I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO Show. Tell your friends.